Hello and welcome to Design Tips, a series of short videos created to help you get the most from your design specifications. This video offers a review of the Corian Private Collection and is relevant to all skill levels. If you're a design student, this could be completely new information for you, and if you're a seasoned veteran, it should serve as a nice review. The Corian Private Collection, with its characteristic directional patterns, requires a few additional considerations that are atypical for standard Corian colors. These additional steps are not complicated, but without clarification in your drawings and specs, the bidding contractor is prone to making the wrong assumptions, typically with the focus of the lowest cost option in order to win the bid. The end result will be an installation that, although technically sound from a construction perspective, will be less than satisfying visually for you and your client. Here are the six most common elements that need to be considered. The first step is in selecting an appropriate contractor, and although that is commonly outside of your control, there are a few things you can do to stack the deck in your favor. In the fabrication section of the specifications, refer to the Private Collection Technical Bulletin, which can be found in the Corian Fabrication Manual, and if possible, require the selection of a certified fabricator and installer for your project. Our first design consideration is the edge detail. There is a seemingly endless array of designs that can be applied to Corian, and here are a few of the more common styles. But the key element we need to address is the fabrication method. In most instances, the optimal method is a layering or stacking of material. This method maintains a consistent edge grain appearance and provides the maximum number of profile options, including OG and bull nose. Discourage your contractor from using a drop edge approach which results in a mismatch between the face pattern and the edge grain. Corian basil is a vivid example of the difference between the face pattern and the edge grain, and it highlights the importance of the stacking method. Corian witch hazel is a much softer pattern, but as you can see it still has a grain effect. There is an alternate method that can also be preferable, commonly referred to as V-groove or miter fold. This method folds the top surface down and eliminates the edge grain visibility. Although it is only feasible for straight run counters, it is ideal for large aprons and waterfalls. This is the close-up of Corian Sorrel featuring the stacked method. Notice the strong edge grain shown here. And now compare this with another installation of Corian Sorrel, where the designer used a V-groove or a miter fold. Notice the difference in the overall aesthetics by simply changing the way you handle the edge design. Here they have created a waterfall and extended the countertop to the floor using the V-groove or miter fold method. The next consideration involves multi-directional layouts. Although Corian is typically known for its inconspicuous seams, with the private collection, a break in the pattern will be noticeable. There are two popular choices for addressing this trait. The first emphasizes the seam appearance as a design feature and simply involves a miter joint, as shown here. Notice how the visibility changes with the various colors. You can find similar photographs for each on the Corian website, and a hot link is offered at the end of this video. A standard butt joint is generally not common, particularly with the high contrast patterns. There's a variation to the miter called the swoop, 
This concept is similar, but the seam is moved away from the inside corner and gradually curves into the rear. Moving this seam from the inside corner eliminates the need for reinforcements and reduces fabrication time. The second option for multi-directional layouts is to continue the pattern direction on the return counter. The objective here is to minimize seam appearance rather than highlight it. This is often limited to returns of less than 30 inches, although it can be extended to greater lengths. The third, fourth, and fifth considerations also address seam placement. Although there are no tricks of the trade in dealing with wide tops, long counters, and long sections of wall cladding, it is important to understand seam visibility and clearly communicate seam placement in your drawings. The private collection colors have a non-repeating pattern that measures 12 feet in length and 30 inches in width. For island tops, conference tables, transaction counters, and other applications wider than 30 inches, consider your preferred seam placement. The same idea applies to long counters such as bar tops and food service counters. It is equally important on wall cladding and backsplashes. Be sure to communicate your preferences before the bidding process. This will ensure the fabricator prices the job according to your desires, rather than guessing what his or her lowest price competitor will quote. There are always chances to reduce cost after the bidding phase, but it is very costly to add or clarify features after a contract is written. The final consideration is going to require your interaction. Pause the video and select a sample from your library or showroom. Don't worry if you don't have a sample, I will also demonstrate with a photograph. Pictured here is Corian Saffron. The left side of the sample is intended to be face up. The right side is the back side. Notice how the colors are much more concentrated on the right. As we remove microscopic layer after layer, the concentration of the pattern gradually changes. Consequently, when a fabricator mills away the top surface, the visible pattern changes. This was first noticeable when we discussed edge details, but it is also relevant to cove joints. In this installation of Lava Rock, the integral cove joint is milled to create the nice, smooth radius transition. But if you look closely, you will notice a slight variation in the color and concentration of the pattern. This is to be expected and is a characteristic of the material. The same is true for routed drain boards and other three-dimensional shaping. Before we conclude this video, let's quickly recap the discussion. First, we want to use our specifications to promote the selection of an appropriate fabricator. We also need to carefully consider various design options and set the proper expectations with our clients regarding seam visibility, edge designs, and directional changes. And we address the importance of clearly communicating our design intent with the bidding contractor before the contract is awarded. Doing so will eliminate the guesswork of the bidders and increase the likelihood of a successful installation. But the most important recommendation is saved for last. There are nearly 300 employee owners of Parksite and we are all invested in your business. We are committed to helping you achieve a successful outcome on each and every project. So let us know what you're working on. And although we may not have all of the answers all of the time, we do have access to the resources of a $50 billion organization known as DuPont, as well as their global network of highly trained fabricators. So we hope you will include us on your next project, and we look forward to working with you. On behalf of the nearly 300 associate owners of Parksite, thank you for watching.